It's a blessing for Pokemon with a top prospect in 2023, a top 50 player, and Deshaun Harris Smith. How you doing, man? Good. How are you? Pretty good. Well, let's get into this. 247 released their first 2023 rankings. You came in the top 50. What was it like seeing your name there? Uh, it felt good knowing like uh, hard work after days off and seeing people like recognize my talent. So. Now you are a player that we had we see had a big time soft freshman season. Going forward now, though, how did that freshman season help you, and what were some of the biggest things you took away from it? I mean, uh, freshman year was real good, playing with Jeremy and Trev, like one of the top uh, players in their class, so they taught me a lot. And then Doug, also one of the top one guards in his class, so I just learned a lot from them, soaking in everything I could, and then playing against them every day in practice. Now, Jeremy's heading out to Duke, but him as a senior leading the kind of the team, what was it just having him there, and what were some of the biggest things he helped teach you, both on and off the court? Uh, on the court, a big thing he helped me with was confidence because I, I really had that. But then, uh, like, he always just told me, like, keep my head up when I miss shots and the ball over. Like, he believed in me, so that helped me with confidence. And then, like, off the court, I just feel like being around him every day made me a better person because he was, like, nice to everybody. But, like, even though he's going to Duke and he, like, one of the top point guards, he never acted like that. He had, like, a regular student on here by him. Not many guys out there get the opportunity to be playing alongside four, three of the four of the top guys in the country – all guys that kind of run your position as well, being around those guys, going against them at practice each day, what are those battles like? Uh, every day, I, I mean, I was guarding Trevor most of the time, so it was just, like, hard to guard him because, like, he's not uh, – he's athletic, but, like, that's not what he relies on. So it's, like, mm-hmm. hard relying on someone that doesn't rely on the athleticism. And that's what's different about Trevor. He's a guy that almost a lot like kind of Kyle Lowry to a degree where he just gets his thing done, but he doesn't necessarily have the physical traits – and for a lot of guys, like you said, it is hard, especially if you are a guy that kind of relies a little bit more athleticism-wise. How did you learn to kind of battle against a guy like that all year long? I mean, uh, when you practice with him every day, you eventually, like, uh, learn his moves and stuff like that. So then that helped a lot. And yeah, just playing against him every day. That, it got me better on defense. With Jeremy gone now, Trevor Doug, which two of the main guys, but that means it's a lot bigger role for you next season. How do you look to grow now? What do you expect now for your sophomore season? I mean, I come in. I expect to come in and score more points. Uh, just do a lot more everything, grab more rebounds, get more assists, play more defense. I just want to do better all around. Being at Paul the Six, big time school, well known, historical great high school basketball program. Why did you choose them though for your freshman season? Uh, I chose PBI because eighth grade, like seeing uh, well, Jeremy was hurt my eighth grade year, but seeing Trevor like uh, take over as a sophomore. And then see Doug, like, uh, he was, I think, second team WCC as a freshman. And then uh, Trevor was the youngest player to win a uh, co WCC player of the year. And I just, I just wanted to be in the same shoes as them. So I just decided I should come follow them and try to follow me footsteps. A lot of freshmen like taking the idea where they go to a typical high school, not necessarily a national schedule kind of team, and they kind of just are the star player. They get to kind of get their feet wet in the high school basketball world. You took a role. You didn't necessarily, you competed with the best of the best. You played against many big time teams we're talking about in a minute. Going against those teams, though, like guys like Sierra Canyon and many others, what are those games like? Uh, at first, you'd be nervous. But then, like, uh, in layup lines, like, you see uh, everybody in the crowd just gets you excited. And, I mean, it's just basketball at the end of the day. So, yeah. Eventually, guys like Trevor is going to move on to college. Same with Doug. And it's going to be your t- become your team. You're going to become the main guy. How do you look to groom into them and become really the face of policy six in a few years? I mean, it's uh, really exciting to know that uh, eventually I'm going to be, like, uh, the best player on the nationally ranked team. And it's just, like, it's big shoes to fill, following after Trevor and Doug. Well, I think I'm ready to do that. You were first-team freshman last year. What was it like getting that honor? Uh, I, th- I mean, it, was, it felt good to know, like, even though I wasn't scoring all the points and stuff like that, I was still getting recognized. But, uh, and then just seeing, like, other freshmen I know doing the same thing in school. Let's talk about some of the big games. You had a lot of them, but what would you say was your favorite game or your favorite team to play against? Uh, my favorite game was definitely uh, ING at the Mountain. We play ING at the Mountain and we play. You go against a team that has a full roster of high level players, high major guys. What was it like being in that atmosphere? It was like the funnest game I've ever like been a part. Like the crowd was high, we was high. It was just like the like the experience and the environment was just like nothing nothing I ever played them before. Overall, maybe the biggest win for you guys this past year was the upset win over Sierra Canyon. You guys go in there, you guys are the underdogs. They have 
all these high level players that come from California, a highly media heavy place. You guys go out there and you guys beat them on national television. What was your guys' mentality? What was your guys' approach to the game heading into that? Uh, we felt like that they was like going to overlook us. Like we were just like a school from Virginia and they was like a top, like they had a lot of top 50 guys. So we thought they were just going to oversee us. And we just knew we came out, played hard, played as a team. We had a chance to beat them. When you guys walked out of that game, you guys knew you guys were champions. What went through your guys' mind? What was it like? Uh, it just felt good. Like being one of the, like, one of the best teams in the country. Like it's showing that we can play with the, uh, the best and show like we are one of the best teams in America. Upcoming season now next year, is there a certain kind of level you want to play at? What's kind of the averages or numbers you want to average next year? Uh, I feel like I need to average like, I'll say like 15 points and then I'm going to try to grab like um, eight rebounds, maybe three assists a game. Oh my God. I think that would be good for me. You play on this national level. You're putting up big numbers. You're now ranked in the top 50. The other big part of that is the college recruitment process. How's it looking for you? Who's showing the most interest right now? Uh, I just uh, – at school, like when coaches call, uh, Coach Rello doesn't really tell me because they don't want me to get, like, big-headed. Like, he's trying to keep me humble. Mm -hmm. But uh, he, he has told me, like, UVA calls a lot. I know Miami's called. But I don't know about all the schools because he, like, he, he tries to keep that stuff away from me. So I can just, like, focus on school and get better every day. That's the unique thing. I think a lot of coaches don't take that approach. They want the guys to be hyped up media-wise. To have a coach that truly cares about your career and wants you to perform your best, what's like having him in your life? Uh, coach Rello, he's probably one of the best coaches I had because he cares about making me better as a basketball player and, like, as a man. He just, like, wants me to be the best version of me. So I think that's really helpful. Let's go down the road. When the time does come, in a year or so, or so when coaches can start calling you and you really get into this recruiting process, what must a college have for you to really consider them? Uh, I think I just need to be uh, – for first, I got to be, like, real close to the coach like I am with Coach Rello. So I think that helps me, like, on the court and off the court. And then also just, like, I just want to win. So, yeah. Build me a dream coach. Do you talk about him being personal, having a great relationship? Do you want one that is kind of a more energetic coach, maybe a more laid-back coach, a champion, a younger coach? What are you looking for in this kind of traits? Well, my dream coach is Coach K, so he's not going to be, like, as energetic as if he is, like, when I get there, because he's going to be older. But, yeah, I would like an energetic coach, like something like just like Coach Rella. You mentioned some of the guys on your team right now. I'm not sure if Jeremy or Trevor and those guys will still be at the colleges when you do get there. I think they might be going pro before then. But if they happen to be there, would it be enticing to possibly team up with them at the college level? I mean, yeah, I hope so. If I get to the level as, uh, like, a high major D1 at, like them, I, I, I don't see why I wouldn't want to try to team up with them. Another appealing thing for a lot of guys is the potential of teaming up with someone in your class. Have you talked to anyone about possibly teaming up? Uh, not really. Not for college. Nah. Just, like, AU stuff. So not college stuff. So. Who would you say is maybe a couple of the guys that you are pretty close to that you think you play really well with that – you could see yourself possibly team up with either in a high school call or at some point. Uh, one of my closest friends will take over. My, uh, my takeover team is Jacoy. I think me and Jacoy play good together. And then uh, also two point guards on my team, Jeremiah and uh, Malik Mack. I think we all, all four of us play real good together. So if we could play in college together, that would be great. Takeover always had a solid team, but this 2023 team would have been something special if we could have seen it play in the UIBL and possibly Peach Gen this past year. How special were you guys this past season? Uh, I think we was a great team. Because, I mean, last year, eighth grade, we didn't lose a game. So, we just uh, – this year, we just kept the same mentality, not trying to lose a game. We only played, like, five games this summer, though, but we won every game. So, yeah. Next year, if you guys are able to keep all the pieces together, what's the goal of the team? What, you guys, what could you guys accomplish next AAU season? I think we can win 16 championships because I don't think it's a team 2023 that can really beat us. I mean, look at your core. He's a guy that's in the DMV as well. And this 2023 class in the DMV area is loaded. There's tons of guys in the top 50. A lot of guys that could have been ranked in there as well. What's like competing against all the other top 2023 guys in your area? Uh, I think it's great for us to uh, compete against each other because we don't got to go like all the way across the country to play the best guys in America. We can, like they like, like they neighbors to us. So playing like Jacoy and then Amani, Jonathan, seeing them like every weekend, every other weekend is good for all of us to get better for people. Who's your favorite guy to go up against in one-on-one -on -one matchup this past season? Uh, 
Um, I'll say I'll look forward to playing against Kwame and Jonathan and Team Durant and Amani. Absolutely. And last year, you had a big rising time coming into high school. You really started building a name for yourself through CP3 camp. What was that like? Uh, the CP3 camp, I just took as an opportunity to show that, like, uh, I can play with the best kids in my class. I just went out there and played my hardest, and I got picked for the uh, top 20 camp. So that was, like, good for me to get my name out there. People that watch your game notice you are freakishly athletic. You are able to score at a high level. Describe your game a little bit. For people that don't know you, though, what do you bring to a table? Uh, on the basketball team, I bring defense first because I know if I, like, get uh, turned up defensively, my offense is going to come. But on the offensive end, I can get to the basket. I like mid-range. I can shoot, pass, get everybody involved. Not a lot of the freshmen know how to use your, their athleticism as well as you do. When did you start utilizing that? When did you realize that you had that athleticism and you started doing it in the game? I feel like I always use it playing basketball because before basketball, I played football, and that's like mostly athleticism. So when I just start playing, when I just moved on to basketball, I think the athleticism just came with it. Like I never not used it. Your Instagram name is that dog Deshaun. What is that? What that? Why do you have that dog in front of it? Uh, my mom told me, like, um, seventh grade, my mom told me I need to start playing like a dog. So then that just came into my head one day, and I changed that. And it's because of her. She gave me that name. She always told me to play like a dog. So. That's a mentality that I'm a big fan of. I think a lot of people are starting to realize how valuable having that dog mentality or that Kobe mentality. How did you first learn that in a game? I'll probably say the beginning of ninth grade year, like coming in, as a freshman, it was only two freshmen on varsity, and I didn't want to ride the bench, so I feel like I had to go whoever was getting, getting minutes before me. So that's where it came from. The hardest part of that is balancing both on and off the court feeling of that. How do you flip the switch when you step on a court? How do you get into that dog mentality? And when you step off of it, how do you get back to kind of being yourself? When I get on the court, you just got to, like, give yourself little reminders, like your time to, like, lock in, stuff like that. That's when you can, uh, like – getting that dog mentality. But then when you off the court, you know, you want to relax. So you just be yourself. You don't always got to be so serious. Absolutely, man. You've had the past few months now of really grinding on your game during quarantine, had some runs in. But overall, what's the biggest thing you worked on that we can expect to see from you now in your sophomore year? Biggest thing I worked on this summer was uh, pull-up jump shots and uh, using my right hand more. So I think I will see a lot of that this year. A few more things before I let you go. One is discussing building a legacy for yourself, which is something I think all guys want to do. So when you're already done playing basketball someday, what do you want to remember for? What do you want your legacy to be for what you achieve both on and off the court? Uh, I would hope my legacy is like, I just want people to think that I made people around me better on and off the court. I just made them better versions of themselves. Absolutely, man. My final thing, for your final three years of high school basketball, what would be a successful three years? What do you want to achieve and accomplish? What's everything you want to get done in the next three years? Dream, dream next three years, win WCC three times, get state championship three times, McDonald's All-American, Jordan Brand Classic All-American, all of that, top 15 in my class, ESPN, just be a high major, five star two. No doubt, man. Well, I'm definitely excited to see what God's got next for you. Thanks for coming on, man, and good Jesus. luck. Thank you. Of course, you're always welcome on, man. God bless. You too.